In this video, I'd like to briefly discuss introductions and conclusions as part of your speech. So, uh, just to get started with introductions, introductions have to do with getting your speech off on the right foot. So you have one chance to make a first impression with the audience, and you want to do that in the introduction. And there are certain things you want to accomplish in the introduction. So here are your objectives for an introduction. First of all, you need to grab the audience's attention. You need something that pulls them in uh, right from the start of the speech, that gives them a reason to listen, and, uh, and that just grabs their attention right away. So what are some things we can do to gain the attention of the audience? Well, we can begin with a quote. That's a classic uh, speech tactic, is to begin with a quote. You can find an effective quote that has to do with your topic and relates to your topic that, that is engaging to the audience and draws them in in that way. You can tell a story. We are narrative creatures. We love stories. So starting with a story is a great way to begin a speech and pull the audience in. You could ask a question. Um, again, a question that relates to the topic you're talking about would be best. So ask them a question and, and get them thinking about that topic in that way. You can state an unusual fact or statistic, uh, or a shocking fact or statistic about about that topic, and, and that that you know again really grabs their attention and and makes them want to pay attention, gives them some information they may not have thought about or known about that topic. You can build suspense with a delayed reveal. You can you can kind of you know, build that suspense and and hold off on telling them what the topic is, but but do some things that that build that suspense and make them really curious about what it is you're going to be talking about. You can use humor. People love humor. We like jokes. Again, make sure all these things are related to the topic you're talking about. Don't just tell your best joke, even though it has nothing to do with the topic you're speaking on. But, but find something humorous, some way that you can connect uh, that topic uh, in a humorous way. Uh, and you can also refer to the occasion, depending on what you're doing, what you're talking about, uh, and what the, the rhetorical context or rhetorical situation is. You could refer to the occasion and make some reference to what it is you're doing there. So there are a variety of ways that you can gain the attention of the audience, but whatever you do, uh, however you choose to do that, you need something right from the start, within the first 10 to 15 seconds or so, that really pulls that audience in and just hooks them really well. Uh, then, as part of the introduction, you also want to reveal your topic and purpose. And I know it sounds really basic and really simple. Why Why would I need to mention that? Why would that be an objective in, of an introduction? You would be amazed how many times... People will get through the introduction of a speech, and the audience still doesn't really have a clear idea what exactly it is they're trying to accomplish or what it is their purpose is. You want to be very clear up front with not only what your topic is, but what your purpose is for speaking on that topic. So refer, reveal your topic and purpose very clearly in the introduction. You need to establish the relevance for your speech. The audience needs to have a couple questions answered. First of all, why? Why are you talking to me about this? Why do I care? And, and then what's in it for me? You need to tell the audience why this topic is, should be important to them, why they should be listening, why they care about what you're going to be talking about. But establish relevance is absolutely crucial in the introduction of a speech. You need to establish your credibility. You need to let the audience know why they should be listening to you, whether that's some experience you have on this topic or the amount of research that you've done on this topic. But you need to establish this through through your competence and, and your character. So letting the audience know that you know what you're talking about and that you are a reliable source for this information. You need to establish that credibility. And then you need to preview the main points. You need to tell the audience exactly what your main points are going to be. They should not leave the introduction without knowing exactly um, what the main points of your speech are. So this is the first part of telling the audience what you told them. Again, you're going to tell the audience what you tell You tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. So in the introduction, you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. You're going to lay out the, the main points of your speech before you get to the body where you're going to tell them. And then in the conclusion, as we'll talk about, you're going to wrap it up by telling them what you told them through a review statement. So you need that preview in the introduction. Really, really important. Now, Bear in mind, all of this is going to happen fairly quickly. We're not talking about hours of introduction. We're talking about seconds, potentially, or, or at most a minute or so, depending on how long your speech is. Well, so, um, and we'll get into that. We'll get into some tips here. But, but these five things really need to happen in the introduction to your speech in some way. So some tips for introductions. First of all, your introduction is going to be prepared after you prepare the body. Obviously, you're not going to know what you're talking about until you prepare the body of your speech. That has to happen first. You won't be able to preview the main points if you don't know what those main points are. You won't be able to establish effective quotes or stories or, or relevance or anything else until you know what's going to happen in the body of your speech. So you prepare the introduction after you prepare the body of your speech and after the, the main content of your speech is prepared. Now, the introduction should be brief. It should only be about 10%, 10 to 15 percent of the length of the body of your speech, so or the total time of your speech. So, if you have a you know a five-minute speech, just to keep things 
uh, just to keep things round, that's about 300 seconds, right? So your your total introduction time should be no more than like 30 to 45 seconds at most. So all five of those things that we talked about happening in the introduction need to happen in that short amount of time. So keep in mind that your, your introduction is not going to be uh, very long, but it is going to be critically important. You need to remember the, the, the primacy effect. Um, so people remember what they hear first, and, and this is your first impression for the audience, and so we need to, to remember that they're going to pay particular attention to what they hear first and what their first exposure is to you. So you need to practice your introduction and be polished. It needs to come come off smoothly and, uh, and be done very well. You need to be creative in the uh, introduction as well, though. You need to uh, find ways to pull that audience in and be creative with how you organize things and the information that you include there. Okay, so that's the introduction. Five components to the introduction, then you need to prepare it after the body, be brief, and remember that this is their first impression, so the primacy effect is going to be uh, in, in play there. So what happens at the other end of your speech, at the, con at the conclusion of your speech, where you're wrapping it all up? This is the end in the conclusion, so it's also very, very important uh, that you end on a high note, right? Because this is going to leave the lasting impression for the audience. So. What are objectives for a speech conclusion? Well, first of all, we need to restate the purpose and the main points. Again, we had the preview in the introduction. Really, here we're going to have the review statement. So preview in the introduction, review in the in the conclusion, where you where you go through and you line up your main points again. So again, as part of the speech process, you're going to tell the audience what you're going to tell them. Then you tell them. Then you tell them what you told them. In the conclusion, this is your opportunity to tell them what you told them. Right? Through a review statement and restating that, that purpose and the main points again very clearly. You're also, depending on the type of speech you're giving, you're either going to remind the audience of the relevance, you want to bring that back up again, why is this important to them, or in a persuasive speech, you're going to take that one step further and give them a call to action. Uh, what is it that they should do with this information? We need to give them some marching orders here, so uh, give that audience a call to action. And finally, you want to end uh, clearly and memorably. So uh, just like in the introduction, you want to grab their attention, you want to give them something at the end that that, uh, that resonates with them. So uh, you can end clearly and memorably. And there are a variety of ways you can do that. Again, you could use a quote just like you did in the introduction. Not the same quote, but use a quote. You can make a dramatic statement like you would have in the introduction with that surprising fact or information. You can make some sort of grand dramatic statement. Um, you can refer back to the introduction, which is an effective tool if you have that ability to do that. Um, start a story in the introduction and conclude it in the, in the conclusion or whatever, but you can refer back to something that you did and talked about in the introduction. You can use humor. Again, when it's appropriate, humor is always a good way to to connect with the audience. Uh, you could ask a question, just like we did in the uh, in the introduction. So a lot of the same things you're seeing in the introduction are viable options for ending clearly and memorably in the conclusion as well, but we need something that, that does that. So those three things are what we're going to try and accomplish in the conclusion, that we're going to review and restate the purpose. We're going to either remind the audience of the relevance and or give them a call to action. And then we need something, some way to, app, uh, to wrap things up memorably and end it clearly and, and, and memorably and, and also by end clearly, we mean let the audience know that the conclusion is here, that you're wrapping things up. Don't leave them, don't just cut it off and leave the audience surprised that your speech is over. But we need to let them know that the end is here for your speech and, and end it clearly and memorably. So a couple of tips for your introduction. Uh, the conclusion should be prepared both after the body and the introduction. So you want to put together your body of the speech first, then put together the introduction and finally the conclusion after that. You want to signal the end is near with the transition into the conclusion. You can do that simply by saying, in conclusion, as I conclude, as I wrap up today, that will give the audience the indication that you're moving into the conclusion and things are you're, you're bringing things in for a landing here. The conclusion is even shorter than the introduction typically, so should be no more than 10% uh, of the body of the speech. So, again, if it's a five-minute speech, 300 seconds, we're talking about uh, no more than 30 seconds, probably closer to 20 or so for the conclusion. So even less time in the conclusion than we would in the introduction. And you want to use, uh, if you're giving a persuasive speech, use that emotive language that pushes the audience to action. And, and then remember the recency effect. The primacy effect had to do with the introductions, and it's that audiences or people remember what they hear first, but they also remember what they hear last. And that has a significant impact on them. So you want to remember the recency effect. This is going to be a lasting impression for the audience. So your conclusion really needs to be strong. It needs to be practiced and polished, just like the introduction. And just like the introduction, it needs to be creative. If you have questions about introductions or conclusions, feel free to email me. I'm always happy to correspond through email and answer any questions about the content or give any feedback on your introductions or conclusions, uh, but both very critically important parts of your speech. So happy communicating.